Good evening everyone and welcome to a very special live coverage of the coronation of His Majesty King Charles III along with Her Majesty Queen Consort Kamala currently being held in the capital London, Britain. The eyes of the world are directed today to the British capital London where the United Kingdom is witnessing an important event which is the coronation of King this historic event of the King coronation with its preparation. But before we go any further, we have a live coverage right here in the state of Kuwait from the Embassy of the United Kingdom. Would you please join me all in a toast to His Majesty the King? To the King. I would now like to invite His Excellency Sheikh Mohammed Abdullah to say a few words. Thank you, Excellency. Allow me just to say a few words in Arabic first, if you don't mind, please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ashab al-Sa'ad al-Rasa'a al-Bahda'at al-Mu'asiyya al-Mu'atamada lada dawlat al-Kuwait al-Sayyidat wa al-Sa'ad al-Hulur Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yus'idni wa yusharifni al-Musharaka fi hadha al-Hafl al-Ra'a al-Ladhi yahtafi bi hadath tarikhi wa istithnai kabir يتمثل بتدويج صاحب الجلالة الملك تشارلز الثالث ملك المملكة المتحدة لبريطانيا العظمى وإيرلندا الشمالية منتهزا هذه المناسبة للتعبير عن خالص التهاني والتبريكات من لدن سيدي حضرة صاحب السمو أمير البلاد المفدى الشيخ نواف الأحمد الجابر الصباح حفظ الله ورعاه ورعا وسمو ولي العهد الشيخ مشعل الأحمد الجابر الصباح حفظ الله ورعاه ورعا ومن سمو الشيخ أحمد النواف الأحمد الصباح رئيس مجلس الوزراء ومن شعب وحكومة الكويت لجلالة لجلالته وللشعب البريطاني الصديق مؤكدين على يقين إيماننا بما يتمتع به جلالته من سمات متميزة ورشد وحكمة معهودة عنه لقيادة البلد الصديق والارتقاء بمساره الحضاري العريق نحو أفاق التقدم والرقي والازدهار الحضور الكرام أكاد أن أجزم أنه لا يخفى عليكم ولا على العالم أجمع ما يوليه جارته من اهتمام بالغ في قضايا عالمنا المعاصر لا سيما في مجال التغيير المناخي وحرصه على توحيد جهود المجتمع الدولي لإيجاد حلول ناجعة للحد من آثار السلبية لهذه القضية الحيوية وساماته البارزة في الحفاظ على التراث الإنساني والموروثات الثقافية والحضارية لدى كافة الأمم بالإضافة إلى دوره النبيل في دعم ومساندة كافة المبادرات الإنسانية التي تهدف التي تهدف لتخفيف معاناة المنكوبين والضحايا جراء الكوارث الطبيعية أو الحروب والصراعات في مختلف بقاع الأرض الحضور الكرام لا يفوتني في هذه المناسبة العزيزة بيان ما تتمتع به الأسرتين الحاكمتين في البلدين الصديقين من علاقات تاريخية ووطيدة وراسخة تمثلت بحرصهما على ديمومة التواصل حول الكثير ما من شأنه تعزيز الشراكة الاستراتيجية التي تتمتع بها دولة الكويت والمملكة المتحدة وحرصهما الدائم متطلعهم المستمر للتقاء بالتعاون البناء بين البلدين في الختام لا يسعني سوى التعبير عن تمنياتي الصادقة لجلالته والأسرة المالكة بوافر الصحة والسعادة وكل التوفيق والسداد والمملكة المتحدة وشعبها الصديق المزيد من الرقي والازدهار في ظل القيادة الحكيمة والرشيدة لصاحب الجلالة الملك تشارلز الثالث شكرا لكم اسمحوا لي Thank you. I have to say a few words in English. I'm sorry, but I wouldn't let this opportunity pass me by. Excellencies, distinguished uh, guests, esteemed members of the embassy, ladies and gentlemen, salam alaikum wa barakatuh. It's both an honor and a privilege to be standing here before you on this remarkable occasion as we celebrate the coronation of King Charles III, a momentous event that marks a new chapter in British history. In my capacity, it is uh, of great pride to me to extend uh, to attend this uh, esteemed gathering, highlighting the enduring bond between our nations that has been forged over the years. The friendship has been enriched by mutual respect, cooperation, and understanding. 
and is further strengthened by the long-standing relationship between the two families. King Charles's fondness of Kuwait is well known, and his eight visits to my beloved country are a testament to his dedication in nurturing the ties between our two nations. His passion for environmental con con conservation, sustainable development, and cultural exchange resonates deeply with the values of the Kuwaiti people, and we look forward to working together on sh shared goals that will create a brighter future for us all. As we celebrate the dawn of King Charles III's reign, we take great pride in the strong ties that have brought our nations closer, and we are confident that under his leadership, the United Kingdom and Kuwait will continue to foster a relationship built on trust, collaboration, and shared aspirations. On behalf of His Highness the Emir, Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabr Al Sabah, and the Crown Prince, Sheikh Mishal Al Ahmed Al Jabr, Prime Minister, Government, and Peoples of I offer our heartfelt congratulations to King Charles and the people of the United Kingdom on this momentous occasion. May his reign be marked by wisdom, compassion, and the unwavering commitment to unity, peace, and prosperity for all. Thank you very much. So if Captain Paul Mulvaney could present us with the sword, we will then cut the cake. Welcome back right here on KTV2. We are still celebrating this uh, great moment. Let me continue exactly where I start off and let me tell you something. As the coronation ceremony has been the same for more than a thousand years in which the British ceremony is considered be the only remaining event of its kind in Europe. However, Buckingham Palace has stated that although the coronation will be accordance with the ancient traditions and it will also reflect the role of his majesty the king today and give a glimpse into the future of the united kingdom here's more in the following report on life and career of his majesty king charles the third his majesty king charles the third formerly known as the prince of wales became king on the death of his late mother queen elizabeth ii on September 8th of 2022. In addition to his official and ceremonial duties in the United Kingdom and overseas as the Prince of Wales, His Majesty has taken a keen and active interest in all areas of public life for decades. The King has been instrumental in establishing more than 20 charities over 40 years, including the Prince's Trust, the Prince's Foundation and the Prince of Wales Charitable Fund. His Majesty has worked closely with many organizations, publicly supporting a wide variety of causes relating to the environment, rural communities, the built environment, the arts, healthcare, and education. 
the king's mother was proclaimed Queen Elizabeth II at the age of 25, when her father, the late King George V, died aged 56, where on the queen's accession to the throne, former Prince Charles III, as the sovereign's eldest son, became heir apparent at the age of three. Becoming the Prince of Wales, the king had a long and enduring relationship with Wales and that relationship remains today, as His Majesty shares a fondness of Scotland. The Duke of Rothsay spent time in the country, both carrying out public engagements and privately on the Balmoral estate. Later, as heir to the throne, took on the traditional titles of the Duke of Cornwall under a charter of King Edward III in 1337, and in the Scottish peerage of Duke of Rothsay, Earl of Carrick, Baron Renfrew, Lord of the Isles, and Prince and Great Steward of Scotland. His Majesty was invested as Prince of Wales by the late Queen on the 1st of July 1969 in a colourful ceremony at Cairnford Castle, where the following year he took his seat in the House of Lords. The former Prince of Wales supported the late Queen Elizabeth II as the vocal point of national pride, unity and alliance, and bringing people together across all sections of society representing stability and continuity, highlighting achievements and emphasizing the importance of service and the voluntary sector by encouragement and example. As the Prince of Wales, His Majesty traveled abroad every year at the request of the Foreign and Commonwealth Office to further British diplomatic interests, raise the UK's profile in the country visited and promote British excellence. Thus, royal tours provided an opportunity for the heir to familiarize himself with a wide range of international issues and to meet many heads of state and senior officials. Moreover, His Majesty the King is a strong supporter of the armed services and saw them as one of the most important parts of his role as heir to the throne. His relationship with the armed services consisted of main activities. In addition, Queen Elizabeth II's death in 2022 marks the beginning of a new era for the House of Windsor. As Prince Charles ascended to the throne and became the King of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth, other royal family members have received a new titles as well. Among those going by new official titles include Prince William, the Duke of Cornwall, his wife Kate Middleton, Duchess of Cornwall, and Camilla Parker Bowles, Her Majesty the Queen Concert. The UK and Kuwait, years of partnership. Governed by a spirit of close friendship, the state of Kuwait and the United Kingdom continue their march of long-standing partnership. Historical ties underline the two countries' commitment to working together across a wide range of shared priorities. Successful mission of improving the deep-rooted relationship. Thus increasing the prosperity and security of both nations. Roots of mutual interest extend from defense and security cooperation, cultural and scientific exchange, promoting trade and investment, to tackle climate change and supporting international development. The participation of re the representative of His Highness Amir Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, may Allah protect and bless him. His Highness the Crown Prince Sheikh Mish Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, may Allah protect him. In the coronation ceremony of His Majesty King Charles III, can constitute a great addition to the distinguished historical relations between the state of Kuwait and the United Kingdom. The visit reflects the depth of the bilateral relations between the two friendly countries, the state of Kuwait and the United Kingdom, looking forward to deepening the strategic partnership and strengthening the cooperation in all fields to achieve the common interest of the two countries. Here's more in the following report. 
The participation of the representative of His Highness the Emir, Sheikh Nawaf Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, may Allah protect and bless him. His Highness the Crown Prince, Sheikh Mish'al Al Ahmed Al Jabbar Al Sabah, may Allah protect him. To the United Kingdom, for the coronation ceremony of His Majesty King Charles III of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is of great importance. It reflects the depth of the bilateral relations between the two friendly countries. The presence of the representative of His Highness the Emir, along with about 200 heads of state and governments at the coronation ceremony of King Charles III, constitutes a great addition and a new brick in the edifice of the distinguished historical relations between the state of Kuwait and the United Kingdom. The supreme participation in the historic coronation ceremony of His Majesty King Charles III comes about two months after the launch of the first rounds of the strategic dialogue between Kuwait and the United Kingdom, which aims to draw a roadmap for a brighter future in various fields and to consolidate the foundations of bilateral relations and elevate them to broader and more welcoming horizons between the two countries. The strategic dialogue also aims to achieve the common vision of the leaderships of the two countries and translate the common ambitious aspirations between the two countries. The course of Kuwaiti-British relations is characterized by bilateral cooperation and strategic partnership, both in terms of achieving common interests and which also achieves joint coordination in various international forums. The state of Kuwait and the United Kingdom look forward to deepening the strategic partnership and strengthening and developing cooperation in all political, security and economic sectors in a way that achieves the interests common to the two countries. Join us now here in our studio, Dr. Khaled Al Janfawi. He's a columnist and political analyst to discuss with us further the relation that binds the two nations together in fields and politics, economy, and geographically. Dr. Khaled, thank you so much for uh, staying with us. This is a pleasure to discuss with you this uh, very distinguished event. Could you tell us about uh, the uh, relationship that bends the two nations together in the fields of politics, economy, and geographically? We know that we live in Asia, and they are in Europe, but somehow there's a connection between these countries, just like we are neighbors. Indeed. Uh, well, the, uh, one can trace the historical uh, or the historic relationships between the two nations, the United Kingdom and Kuwait, to the beginning of the 20th century, since the signing of the uh, agreement between Sheikh, Sheikh Mubarak uh, al Sabah uh, and the, the uh, British government in India, uh, the agreement of 1899, which established basically uh, a very powerful, if you like, relationship between the two nations. Uh, since that time uh, to, to, the, to our current day, uh, this, uh, this historical relationship has been developing and improving throughout the times. And one can also point out to uh, different, if you like, pillars of this relationship, which is basically mutual trust, uh, political, and also uh, trade, uh, if you like, cooperation, um, if you like, common interests, if you like, in the uh, uh, issues uh, of the of the region itself. Just recently, uh, in, in May 2023, uh, Kuwait, uh, the Kuwaiti and British foreign ministers held uh, the strategic dialogue between the United Kingdom and Kuwait, which is basically represents one uh, other development uh, of this very strong and very well-established uh, cultural, political, and uh, even social relationship, if you like. Dr. Anjafawi, stick around because we are going live now to the embassy right here in the state of Kuwait, uh, the United Kingdom. We have a lot of events. Good evening, all. Uh, we have with us Under Secretary of Ministry of Defense, Sheikh uh, Dr. Abdullah Mishal El Sabah. Dr. Abdullah, thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Dr. Abdullah, my first question to you is earlier today, many of us watched the coronation of His Majesty King Charles III. What significance does this event hold? 
So, uh, in the beginning, uh, I would like to express my regards and uh, gratitude to uh, her, His Majesty's Ambassador to Kuwait, Her Excellency uh, Ms. Belinda Lewis, uh, for giving us the opportunity to participate in this reception. Uh, that signifies a historical event, which is the coronation of uh, His Majesty King Charles III. Uh, this relationship uh, between the United Kingdom and Kuwait goes back for mo more than 120 years, and it has been consolidated on several uh, occasions, uh, especially in 1991, wh where the UK uh, took part in uh, the coalition that uh, participated in uh, the liberation of Kuwait and uh, where Kuwaiti and British blood mixed in, uh, on this soil. So we hope that uh, the reign of His Majesty is fruitful and full of uh, successes uh, and to uh, strengthen this relationship uh, into the future. Thank you, Sheikh Dr. Abdullah. Thank you so much. That's all, dear viewers. We'll get back to you soon. Thank you so much. That was Yusuf Jamal. He was live right here in the state of Kuwait from the Embassy of the United Kingdom. We are right back with uh, Dr. Khalid al Janfawi, columnist and political analyst, to discuss further the coronation of the King Charles III. You alluded about a lot of uh, uh, good uh, topics regarding the state of Kuwait and the United Kingdom relationship, the, in particular the memorandum and the agreement was signed in the past or maybe maybe 50 or 60 years ago. Yeah. Let's talk about the, these days that the importance of the participation of the representative of His Highness the Amir, yes. Sheikh Nawaf al Ahmed al Jabr al Sabah, His Highness the Crown Prince, mm -hmm. right over there and he's in person. How significant is that? Well, it's really very significant, significant historically and uh, it also um, uh, represents, if you like, uh, or represents the continuation of this very strong historical relationship between the United Kingdom and uh, the state of Kuwait. Uh, His Highness' presence uh, in the UK to attend the coronation of uh, King Charles uh, III uh, is also uh, an indication that uh, our historical, if you like, uh, relationship with this uh, great nation, the U United Kingdom, uh, will continue to prosper and continue to improve because our political leadership uh, understands that strengthening its relationship or specifically its security and political relationship with its historic or historical, if you like, allies is one, uh, one strong guarantee to the security of our nation and also the security of the rest of the nations in the, in the Middle East. Uh, the United Kingdom uh, has a rich history in its relationship with the whole region, the region of the, um, um, the, the Middle East. But specifically, it has a very, uh, let's say, rich and deep relationship, cultural relationship, uh, trade relationships, uh, historical relationships, uh, and political relationships with the uh, with the state of Kuwait since the beginning of the 20th century. So just imagine this: the the almost a century or so or more uh, of this very uh, well established, uh, the well the continuing, if you like, developing relationship between these two nations really symbolizes uh, the, if you like, the importance that uh, our leadership uh, personally attends this uh, historic uh, event. What about the future, Mr. Jamfawi? A lot of us, we have some kind of aspiration and ambitious goals yes. for these relationships to continue to prosper, just like you alluded about five minutes ago. Uh, do you have some kind of ideas that we are going to raise up to a, a different level as far as these relationships are concerned? Indeed. Let's uh, take it to a yeah. different level. Yeah, indeed. Uh, I think the uh, recent agreements uh, between the United Kingdom and Kuwait also, if you like, emphasized uh, 
uh, many of the, if you like, items signed between the two countries emphasized, for, for, emphasized, for, uh, emphasized uh, for example, the uh, security cooperation, especially uh, the cyber, if you like, uh, security. Um, especially by, say, uh, state or non-state uh, actors uh, targeting both countries. In addition to this, the development of the trade relationship between Kuwait and uh, the United Kingdom uh, takes into account the changing nature of trade and business in the Middle East itself. Kuwait continues to uh, uh, represent to the international world uh, rich opportunities for development, rich opportunities for economic development. And the uh, British government realizes this, has been realizing this for the last century or so. And so we hope that uh, in the next few years, we will witness uh, great investments in, uh, by the British government, or British companies, if you like, or private sector in both countries in uh, improving and developing our local economy. And also Kuwait can also contribute to the development and improvement of the British economy. So um, historically, this is, this is one of the most, if you like, uh, uh, precious and most valuable, if you like, relationship that we have with a, you know, a foreign country. Um, the United Kingdom culturally has become almost part of our, if you like, Kuwaiti psyche. Uh, historically, we associate our alliance, we, st we associate our, if you like, um, uh, cooperation, political and security cooperation and military cooperation with this great nation, the United Kingdom. Dr. Janfawi, I'm not done with you. Stick around, but I have another report to show our viewers. Despite the great geographical distance between Kuwait and UK, and the difference in language and tradition between the two countries, all these factors did not prevent the establishment of strong relationship. Distinguished and exceptional diplomatic relations have been rooted for decades and included various fields of political, economic, military, cultural, and tourism cooperation between the two friendly countries. As the role of the late Sheikh Mbarak al-Sabah is considered the real beginning in the Kuwaiti-British relationship. Here's more report about the fraternal relation that bind the two countries together. 124 years of distinguished relations and mutual interest between the year 1899, which witnessed the signing of bilateral document between Kuwait and Britain, and the year 2022, which witnessed the death of the oldest and longest reigning monarch in the history of Britain late Queen Elizabeth II. After 70 years of rule of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, to be succeeded by her son Charles III to complete the journey of those unique relations that spanned more than 12 decades. Lamina Station, the first of which was Sheikh Mbarak al-Sabah, who signed the document passing through the signing of British political resident in the Gulf. William Luce, the Kuwait Declaration of Independence and the presence of the late Sheikh Abdullah Salam al Sabah in the year 1961. As well as the support of the Iron Woman, the late British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher, for Kuwait during crisis, the brutal Iraqi invasion, when Britain contributed a force of more than 45,000 soldiers and 69 combat and aircraft and suffered 47 casualties in Operation Desert Storm. So the British sacrifice for the country remains a witness that the relationship between the two friendly countries was and will remain a unique model between countries in light of changing world. And the train of partnership between the two countries still knows it way well from London to Kuwait. These decades of relations between the two countries remade many mutual visits, including two visits to the British Crown Prince then Charles, the first with his wife, the Duchess of Cornwall in 2007, and the second in 2015 with the accompanying delegation, as well as the visit in 2006 to Prince Andrew, Duke of York.
Welcome back to the live coverage of the coronation of His Majesty King Charles III along with Her Majesty Queen Consort Camilla. Currently being held at the capital, London, Britain. Back with us here, the guest here in our studio columnist and political analyst, Dr. Khalid al Janfawi, to discuss further and most prominent relation between the two countries. Dr. al Janfawi, once again, it's a pleasure to us for you to be here in our studio. Thank you for having me. All right, you mentioned something about the pillars between uh, the relationship between the United Kingdom and the state of Kuwait. Yes. There must have been some kind of uh, improvement through the years to enhance the, the, the structure and integrity of these pillars. Could you elaborate on yeah, that? Indeed. Well, uh, in addition to, um, uh, let's say, histori the historical uh, um, relationship between the two countries, one can consider, if you like, um, military cooperation between the two nations, uh, the bilateral, if you like, uh, military uh, uh, cooperation uh, as one, 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 one important, if you like, uh, a pillar of this relationship. One other pillar of the r historic relationship between the two nations is the cultural relationship and the even the scientific, if you like, exchange between the two countries. Uh, Britain has always been considered by uh, Kuwaitis in general, if you like, historically, as uh, a place to to visit, if you like, uh, for tourism. In addition to this, uh, they have also contributed, the British uh, con contributed uh, from the beginning of the 20th century to the development of the Kuwaiti democracy itself. This uh, cooperation to improve the Kuwaiti democracy and Kuwaiti government governance, if you like, is one other indication that uh, this relationship will always continue to prosper, will always continue to enrich uh, the experiences of the two different people. One important, one other important, I think, pillar of this uh, relationship between you know Britain and uh, Kuwait is that the people-to-people -people links, people-to-people -people relationship between the Kuwaitis and the British, if you like. The Brits. Yeah, they call yeah, them the, the, the Brits. The yeah. Brits. The Brit yeah. Hold this yeah. thought because my colleague uh, Yusuf uh, Jamal Ibrahim, back in the the embassy right here in the state of Kuwait, the United Kingdom, em 